Hello and welcome back to Doc Play's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic chemistry, we're going to be looking at isomerism, and in particular we're going to be looking at this thing, stereoisomerism. So by the end of the lesson today you should be able to do the following things. Define the term stereoisomer, draw the structural formulas of E and Z isomers, and also apply the CIP priority rules to E and Z isomers. So we'll start with definitions. First of all, an isomer. Isomers are molecules with the same molecular formula, but the atoms are arranged differently. And from this we end up with two types of isomers. We have structural isomers and stereoisomers. Structural isomers we have seen in a previous lecture, and if you want to know about those, look up structural isomers in my videos. Today we're interested in the stereoisomers on our right hand side here and again we have two types of stereoisomers we have optical and we'll be looking at those when we look at the A2 chemistry so this is for the second year A level only we are only going to concern ourselves with geometric isomers today so geometric isomers, importantly though, are a type of stereoisomerism. And stereoisomerism, the definition, is a molecule or molecules with the same structural formula, but a different spatial arrangement. And we'll see what we mean by that. So we're going to look at these stereoisomers. And importantly, as I said before, we're going to look at geometric isomers only in the AS course. Geometric isomers occur, importantly, in alkenes only. So, we're interested if there's geometric isomerism, then we must observe a carbon-carbon double bond in the molecule. The reason that gives for the possibility for stereoisomerism is that the carbon-carbon double bond restricts the rotation of the covalent bonds between the carbon and so they can no longer twist around one another. And what that means is it fixes all of the molecules around either end of that carbon-carbon double bond in place. And importantly, if both carbons at either end of the carbon-carbon double bond have different groups, the molecule exhibits or can show EZ isomerism. So let's just look at what that statement means in our example in the top middle here. In the middle we have a carbon-carbon double bond that fixes all of the atoms either side of the carbon-carbon double bond in place. If I start with the left hand side here of the carbon-carbon double bond I look to see I've got a hydrogen on one carbon and on the other carbon I've got a methyl group. We ask ourselves are these two groups different or the same and they're different. Then we go to the right hand side we look here we've got a hydrogen and a methyl group these again are different therefore we have different groups at either end of our carbon-carbon double bond and this molecule will therefore show EZ isomerism. So what is EZ isomerism? Well our meaning and definition, you don't need to remember these words, you just need to remember the lettering, but E coming from the German Entgegen, apologies about my German pronunciation there, means highest priority on opposite sides and Z meaning Zuzemen means highest priority together on the same side or if you're trying to a mnemonic to remember it same side is sometimes given but what is this priority well let's have a look so the priority is calculated from the atomic number of the attached atom and if they're the same then we add 
extra attached atoms until we find out a difference. And we'll look at three examples just to try and elucidate this point. So we'll look at this one in the middle. We'll go on the left hand side first and so the atomic number of hydrogen, well that's easy, that's one, and of carbon which is the one attached here it's six and we don't need to worry about the extra hydrogen so we've got one and six. And then as we look to the right hand side we've got one up here and we've got six down here. And now if we're going to name this molecule, well, we look at the highest priority and we notice that these are on opposite sides. So this one is above and this one is below. They're on opposite sides of our carbon-carbon double bond, if I put a line through that, which means that this is described as an E alkyl. And importantly, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be E but 2E, if I was to number it. OK, let's see how we get on with some of these others. Well, let's start off down at the bottom left here. Let's just first of all decide what it is. Well, we've got 1, 2, 3, four carbons in the chain, so this is but. There's a carbon-carbon double bond, so it's in. And the carbon-carbon double bond comes in between the second and third carbon, so it's but two in. And we've got two side groups. Well, we've got two fluoro, three bromo. Free bromo. And the question is, have we got EZ isomerism? And also, if we do, is it EZ, E or Z? So the first thing to do, to split either side of that carbon, carbon, double bond, look at the left-hand side, and we have different atoms attached to the carbon on the left. And on the right-hand side, we've got different atoms attached to the carbon on the right. So this does indeed show EZ isomerism. Then we have to decide, well, what is that? Is it E or is it Z? So you may be able to do this just off your head, but I'm just going to look at a periodic table here and check the numbers. So F, well, the atomic number of F is 9. For the carbon, because that's the first thing we check, it's 6. We don't worry about the hydrons because we're just dealing with those numbers first. We then go to the right-hand side. We look at the carbon here. So we've got 6, and the bromine is 35. So our highest priority are our fluorine and our bromine in this instant. So they're going to define whether it's E or Z. They are on, as I draw my dotted line through that double bond, opposite sides of the double bond. So this is E, 2-fluoro-3-bromobutyl. Let's have a look at another example over here. So first of all, to name it, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's the longest carbon chain, so this is pent. The carbon-carbon double bond comes on the second carbon, so this is pent 2E. We have a methyl group here which is on the third carbon, so this is 3-methyl pentuene. Now we need to look at whether it shows EZ isomerism. We look at the left-hand side, two, side, two attached groups are different. The right-hand side, the two attached groups are different. So now we need to look at the priority. Well, the left-hand side is easy, this is 1. And CH3, well that's 6. Look here, we've got 6, and we've got 6. Well, they seem to be the same priority, so now we look at the attached carbons, of those things attached to that carbon here, we've got 6 and 3, so we've got hydrogens, whereas this time we've got 6, and well, that carbon's attached to 2 hydrogens and one another carbon, so that's 8. 
Well, the highest priority then here is going to be our ethyl group and our methyl group on the left hand side. So again, we now split our carbon carbon double bond in half. We have again E 3 methyl pentyl. Finally, again, a couple of things just to watch out for, particularly in exams, that it doesn't matter how I draw these stereoisomers, uh, they are still named the same way. So in number one here, I've got two examples, A and B. A here is one, two, three, four, so it's butene, as is B. The highest priority again on both of these examples are on opposite sides of my carbon carbon double bond. So both of these examples are E butene, however I draw them. With my example below, A and B, again, four carbons in the chain, so these are both bute. Second carbon is where the double bond occurs, so this is bute. 2-en again. My highest priority are the methyl groups, so the hydrogens. If I look at my carbon double bond, these are on the same side, and that means I name these as Z but 2 -en. So just those two things to watch out for in these. So a final recap, just to sh say what we've seen here today. You should be able to define the term stereoisomer draw the structural formulas of ENZ isomers and apply the CIP priority rules to ENZ isomers. Those are simply the priorities that we saw before.